the basics of the camera. Framing the shot. By now, you should have a good idea of the basics of the camera. Light, lens, and the recording media. These three things all act together to help you record the photograph. You know, to help you get the shot. Changing one of these three things impacts the other two. In the last lesson, we covered the idea that the photograph must first exist in the photographer's head. That is, the photographer must anticipate what will happen and put him or herself in the right place to get the shot. Sometimes the photographer will spend hours and great effort to get in position to get the shot. Sometimes there is only one chance to get the shot, and other times there are many opportunities to get the shot once the photographer is in position. For example, there is really only one chance to capture the surprise look on a person's face when everyone yells, surprise, or happy birthday, while other times there are multiple opportunities to capture a photo of a baby. There is only one opportunity to capture the silhouette of the International Space Station against the full moon, and there are multiple opportunities to capture the dew on a flower. Each of these shots, though, must be set up planned, and taken with the right settings on the piece of equipment. Many people wrongly believe that a photographer just takes hundreds of photographs and gets lucky and shows only the one that's the perfect shot. True, it does happen that a person, an amateur, does get lucky and gets a great photograph. The experienced photographer, though, has this so-called luck much more often because the experienced photographer plans the shots, puts himself in position, and captures the moment. You see, luck favors effort. So, what are the things that you can do to increase the odds that you will get the shot? First, anticipate the photograph that you want. Visualize it in your head. Scout the area where you will be taking the photograph. Look for the shot. See where you will need to be to get the shot. Inspect your equipment to make sure that it is in good working order. Arrive early. Anticipate the lighting that will be available and what you need to do to enhance your photograph. Do you need an assistant? Do you need a ladder? Is electrical power available? Do you need an extension cord? As you can see, it takes a great deal of effort and work to get the shot that you want. Now that you have visualized the photograph, here are a few tips on how best you can frame the shot. Slightly overshoot the photo so that you can crop it later. It's easy to cut stuff out and it's difficult to put stuff in. Don't way overshoot the photograph, but do it just ever so slightly. Here are a few examples. Square up the shot. That is, make the horizontal background parallel with the edge of the photograph. True, you can always rotate the shot in the editing process, but you lose even more of the photo when you do this. And with digital photography, the pixels are rotated a bit, and this can cause two slightly different colored pixels to blend or average. This causes the image to blur just a little bit, but quality is lost. If you want to know more about this effect, look up more A patterns. They're kind of neat. The rule of thirds. The layperson often wants to put the subject of the photo in the dead center of the photo. It's called the dead center for a reason. Play with the idea of moving the subject of your photo a bit off center in what we call the rule of thirds spot. Here are a few examples.
Framing the shot. It's a good idea to check out everything that's going to be in your shot or your field of view. You know, is there a mirror and do you really want what's reflected in the mirror to be in your photograph? You know, are there things like trees or buildings or people in the foreground that can make your photograph be more interesting? It's amazing what you can do to make your photographs better by just looking at what will be in your photograph or what needs to be in your photograph or what needs to be cropped out of your photograph at the time that you take the shot. The human eye, like the human ear, is really good at ignoring peripheral things. The camera and the microphone are not. You can think of it like this. You're chatting on the phone with somebody and there's a lot of background noise behind that person and they're sort of just ignoring it. However, you have to listen to both because the microphone, it doesn't discriminate. It picks up the background noise and the conversation equally as well and you have to listen to it. Perhaps you have noticed the same thing with the recording that you've made. When you're making the recording, you are listening to the person speaking and you paid no attention to the background noise. But later, when you tried to listen to the recording, you had trouble hearing the person speaking because of all of the background noise. It's that way with a camera too. It's easy for your eye to focus on the subject without seeing what is in the background or the foreground. But when you look at the photo, you ask yourself, what is that? Or why didn't I see that? Others looking at the photo will think the same thing and they'll just excuse you as an amateur photographer. A good photographer looks at more than just the subject.
Fill the frame. Know that it's okay to crop out some of the things in the photo. It's not necessary for your audience to see all of the tree or all of the building. Fill your photos with the things that you want to be in the photo, but don't forget to slightly overshoot the size of the photo so that you can do a better job of cropping later in what we call the post-production, you know, the editing phase of photography. Leading lines. Another good thing to put in the photograph are what we call leading lines. They're lines that direct the viewer's eyes to the subject of the photograph. Leading lines are much better when they come in from the corner of the photograph than when they come in from the side or the top. Here are a few examples. Anything but eye level. Eye level photos are a bit boring. Photographing people from below eye level is often a less than complimentary photograph, and shooting people just above eye level is often more times flattering. Photographers often make use of this technique when photographing politicians. If the photographer likes the politician, the photo is taken above eye level, and if the photographer does not like the politician, the photo is taken below eye level. Remember this when you're taking photos of other people and when you're looking at a photo. The photographer can influence your view just by the angle at which the photo was taken. Look for the details. Capture the details in the photo. That is, take photos of things that people don't normally see. These make for much more interesting photos. Vertical photos and horizontal photos. Not all photos should be forced into one or the other of these two frame types. Consider the subject and then think about what is the best shot. With the fact that today's photographers can take many photos, it is possible for you, the photographer, to take both horizontal and vertical photos. If time allows, try this. You just might like it. If it feels a bit awkward for you to take vertical photos, that means that you're just not doing enough. Force yourself to get comfortable with new things. And finally, Break all the rules. You know, don't pay any attention to any of these rules that we've just covered. Learn the rules so that you can break them. Then make up more rules so that you can break them too. By now, you should be able to take many different types of photographs. The best thing that you can do to get better at taking photographs is to practice and then criticize your photos. Ask other people to make helpful suggestions. You'll not get any better if you just think about getting better. You must practice, evaluate, and strive to get better. You can do it. By now, you should be able to take these types of photographs. A slightly overshot photo, you know, one that you can crop in post-production. This is a good habit to get into. You should be able to take photos that are squared with the background. You should be able to take photos that have the rule of thirds. You should be able to frame the shot. Look at everything that's going to be in your photograph. You know, reposition yourself if you need to be. Check for things to make sure that the background is clear or that the foreground is clear. Make sure you fill the frame. Look for leading lines. Do you want to do this as an eye level photo, above eye level, or below eye level photo? Depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your photograph. Look for details in your photo. Know that you can take a photo as a vertical shot and a horizontal shot. It's best to try to get them both ways. And finally, break all the rules. You don't have to follow any of these rules. You might have a great photograph that doesn't follow any of these rules, 